Broken Cask is a solitaire role-playing game about owning and operating an inn in a medieval fantasy world. It is your dining room table covered in papers and charts. It's slinging dice to find out what happens next. It's hoping that slow coach cook of yours can get the next meal out in time for a hefty tip and wondering who will come through the door next. You play it with paper and pencil and at least one six-sided die. It may inspire you to imaginative feats and storytelling of your own, or it may just be a good time when you feel like relaxing and playing alone. You will create your inn and innkeeper persona, hire staff, earn gold, expand your inn, trade at the market, send your hero off on adventures, and oh, so much more. This is done by rolling dice against random tables to generate events, then rolling again to see how you and your staff handle those events. You keep track of things using a log and put yourself in the middle of the action using your imagination. Beyond the recently opened pass through the Harrow Chill Mountains lay the village of Havel. It is here at the mouth of the West Marches that adventurers and travelers make their fortune or way further west into the forgotten lands of long dead empires. I am Count Ronald Swan, Chief Executive Officer and Proprietor of the Fourth Wall Inn. There are those who seek to profit in blood and sweat and tears. And there are those who are wise, who profit instead with soap and bread. One of these groups serves the other. This is a chronicle of their story, of my story, of our story. It is fall, the leaves beginning their turning and there is a chill in the air. A thunderstorm rages outside and everyone at the fourth wall has their nerves on edge with the creak of the walls and the leak of the ceiling. A prophet has taken up lodging at the inn, Vassandra Cloudeye and has taken to predicting the immediate future of the patrons and staff. My first move is to upgrade the common room to an average drinkery, a great expenditure of money, but only through investment can we see true profit. This upgrade will allow us to flip common guest tasks after we roll them turning a 1 into a 6, or a 2 into a 5. At the beginning of the day, a religious festival has let out after a night of fasting. Cleansed in mind and body, they seek good food and drink before collapsing into exhaustive oblivion. Fearful for the future of my inn, I enter the fray personally. My tools of choice tray and mug, and the battle is long and fraught with danger. Victorious, I emerge over the din, the prophet Vesandra offering warnings of trials and tribulations, triumphs and tragedies. For my efforts, I gain the blessings of a local monk. She bestows upon me a blessed icon of the Pope, an enchanted painting which will speak with patrons. It has been some time since the bookshelves have been dusted, and it is on my busy work list for this day. You may ask, oh, who comes to an inn to read? You may scoff, laugh in ignorance, perhaps. Wizards, wizards come to an inn to read, wizards and the wise, and these creatures do not appreciate an untidy shelf. 
I leave this task to Steve Gary, my left-hand man. A storyteller by trade, he knows the value of these tales. Surely, he will take good care of these books. Surely, he would not fail his place of employment. Surely, he would not lie to me. But portents of success are not written in Fassandra's futures. Unbeknownst to me, Steve slacks off in this task. The next time a wizard lodges at this inn, we will surely be at disadvantage in the face of their anger. That is, however, a story for another day. Trouble in the larder. Caratina is proofing the dough in the cellar when she bumps against a shelf. The wood creaks, rattles, damp with humidity, bowed with age. A vase filled with Argovian fruit wine tips, tips and rolls on its round edge off the shelf. Like lightning, Caratina reaches to remedy her mistake. It is to our fortune that with both hands she slows its descent, gently placing the vase back on the shelf. None of us would know not of this, except for a humble prophet in the corner of the inn who saw it all with her third eye. We receive a proclamation, a local noble by the name of the Earl of Grey, which is our signature drink, raspberry spiced ice wine. He wants it cold, he wants it delivered, and he wants it now. Success will see great profits. Failure brings equally great disaster. Disasters we can ill afford. For this challenge, Steve Gary is up to the task. He has traveled the Bruthon woods before, slipping past the many horrors that abound. First, he prepares our signature drink with an expert flourish while Caratina packages it with a nice bow. Setting out, Steve finds himself quickly soaked. Thus distracted, he does not see the brigands approaching him from the side. A knife at his throat, he chooses to pay the toll rather than try to fight. A decision most auspicious. As I say, their lives are worth more than any coin I might offer. Money is nice to have, but loyalty has value untold. You can purchase service, but you cannot buy loyalty. For a paltry two gold, he finds our accounts eight gold richer from a generous tip. The Earl of Grey is pleased. The common room is alight with disaster. It is cocktail hour. Students pouring from the classes at the local university, drenched with rain, dry with thirst. They demand round after round. In their generosity, they stand around for the staff as well. Soon there is nary a sober person left standing in the common hall. Still, service makes its own demands as the staff of the fourth wall must needs their work. Heretina leads the crowd in a rousing song and shepherds the drunkards through their evening. Hands are kept to themselves, drinks arrive unspilled and unspoiled, and fresh roast pork safely enters the belly. A bounty of tip overflows into our jars in the aftermath, and I set myself towards training my staff in the slow absence of customers. For Steve Gary, his heart and mind are now equally strong, and for Caratina, our humble gardener, a test of her physical strength has become an increase of her physical strength in recognition of what she has overcome today. As Caratina finishes a final repetition, deadlifting a keg, Vassandra Cloud Eye cackles in the corner. Lightning strikes twice, she pronounces, and no sooner does she say this than the same group of drunken college students re-enter the inn, twice as drunk, twice as wet with rain, and half the sense and restraint. They smell of cheap booze and wood smoke, laughing and barely coherent, jesting about some professor or another. Caratina takes up this task once more, 
and her newly improved strength of arm, though sore, allows her to overcome this challenge. Wrangling wayward rastrals, she sends them packing after they pay the bill, for no coin they find in their pockets, but they leave behind the locket of hoops. A silver chain for a silver owl, Cassandra whispers that magic lay dormant within. Magic which will speed one's mind with alacrity. After lacking it into the safe box, I bring the evening to a close and send my staff home. No one is yet exhausted, but I need not push my luck after a profitable day. Thus ends the first chapter in the logbook of the fourth wall. Citizens and taxpayers, go home, go home, return in peace, and come again soon.